Hello. By this video, we are going to talk about ribs. Sound waves. These are occurred by plucking some strings. We vibrate strings here. Another example is the water waves. Water waves can be exerted by disturbing the water surface by a pebble. Then the water ripples are occurred as you see here. Let's see how these waves are occurred. And it's clear the waves are occurred by vibrations. Let's see what are these vibrations. Vibrations are occurred when we disturb a surface. As an example, I'll show you uh, the vibration with the pendulum. This is called the pendulum, something suspending with the rope string. So it has a mean position at this position. This is called the mean position. And in a vibration, it moves to one direction and again coming to the middle and going to the other and coming to the middle. So, these are the steps of a vibration and this is called an oscillation too. An oscillation. We'll see the oscillation. Here, see, it is moving now. If we take a closer look at that, it goes, it has a mean position, going away, first movement, coming back to the normal and going to the other direction and coming back to the normal. This is called a vibration or an oscillation. Another way of showing the oscillation is something suspended with an elastic or you can use a spring. Look at this. Now, this is the main position. If I give a small jerk, it goes up and down, up and down, and there's a main position. Look at, look here. Uh, okay, okay, here, yeah, see? It goes up and down, and coming to the main position, goes down, coming to the main position, going up, again coming to the main position. As this is even another type of vibration. This can be seen in springs, and even the toys that you use as yo-yo. Now I'm going to teach you how these waves and vibrations are shown clearly. Right? As an example, I'm going to take the movement of the spring or else that I have showed you something suspending with the elastic. Right? So just imagine uh, there is a spring and an object is suspending. And, and this is the first step. In the second step, and this is the mean position, and in the next stage, I'm going to give a small jerk to the down. Now it has gone down. The particles of the spring has gone down at this position. And the next step is, in the next stage, it is coming back to the normal position. That means to the mean position. Right? And the next one is, it is going up. Next situation is this. And again we can see it is coming back to the mean position. Right? And it is started with the mean position and it has gone down and again start to move up and coming down. According to this motion, I can show this one. This is um, one vibration. One vibration. Right? The movements are in this vibration can be plotted with the time and the displacement. Right? We'll see the movement of particles here. Now I'm talking about the movement of particles. Actually this movement, although I have drawn it as this, this is like the main position, it is going to the down, coming back to the main position, going up and coming back to the main position. These things are drawn here. Right. Now, how this 
is demonstrate this portion how particles are here at the starting point time is zero at the time and then the particles in this time period it has gone down and here when we come to this position the particles have come back but look at the moment these particles start to move down here now this is going to move up this one again to the up and relevant to this point it is here relevant to this point it has come back now it is start to moving to the down and this is also to the down now using these points i can draw the graph it comes as this oh not that so i can draw a graph using these points look here now it has the shape of a wave after plotting this this is called a wave this is the wave now we will learn what are the characteristic of the wave now we have constructed a wave we'll see what we can identify by this wave and this wave we can see a shape i can draw it we can i can extend the wave right so it is like this and this way we can identify some troughs these these points are called troughs and these points are called crusts which are coming up which are coming down are called the troughs and at the same time now one by one we'll see what are the characteristics first one this is the mean position it is equal to this position this mean position and you can see the particles have moved away from the mean position to the either direction right it has come down here and come up the particles so when the particles are moving to these two direction in the direction and we can see the maximum distance the maximum distance right from the mean position the maximum distance of particles which are moved away from this position this distance has a name it is called the amplitude what is it called it is the amplitude so what is called the amplitude then what is called amplitude now you can see amplitude means this distance that distance mean it means the maximum displacement from the mean position of the particles to either directions right so amplitude means the maximum displacement away from the mean position to the either directions of the particles that is the amplitude amplitude a means the amplitude right right at the same time i'll teach you another fact so move the amplitude in a wave more the loudness if it is a sound wave more the amplitude more the loudness and smaller the amplitude quieter the sound that means lower the and smaller the amplitude means the loudness is low quiet sound right it is another extra fact so we have identified what is called the amplitude second fact is we'll see what is called the frequency there's another characteristic or frequency of a sound wave frequency of a sound wave right now frequency of a sound wave means uh before that wait a minute before that you have to learn what is called the lambda or the wavelength wavelength right so wavelength means the distance between two consecutive particles distance between two consecutive particles of a wave now we can 
consider about the particles. Look at here and pay your attention on the direction and the magnitude and situation, position of the particles. Look here. This part, I am taking this particle first. That is the initial position, initial particle. And it is now moving. The position is this, moving to the down. Right? And if I take this particle, it moves. Same position in this mean position, this one and this one. This one starts to move down. and But this is moving to the up. Look here. This particle is moving to the up. Therefore, these two particles are not equal. These two are not equal because this one is moving to the down. This is moving to the up. Therefore, these two particles are not considered as consecutive particles. Consecutive means equal from all the characteristics. Right? But they are the, by the position it is equal, but the direction it is different. But if we consider this particle, same position, same direction. Therefore, these two are two consecutive particles. These two are two consecutive particles. Two consecutive distance between two consecutive particles is called the wavelength. Wavelength. When we consider the wavelength here, now I'll take this point, this particle. What's the consecutive other point to this? Now it is at the trough and also it moves, not it is moving to the down, up not down, it is moving to the up. Now the next consecutive point for that is this. It is even starting to the up. Therefore this distance, distance between two consecutive particles and also this is called wavelength. Wavelength. Right? So by this we can understand this is another trough. Distance between two troughs is called the wavelength and also at the same time two crusts. This is also considered as the wavelength. So actually what if I ask what is called the wavelength, what's the answer? The answer should be the two distance between two consecutive particles of a wave. Usually some, usually students uh, tell uh, distance between two crusts, two troughs. It is, the best answer is distance between two consecutive particles. Because if I take the view starting from here, you can't identify crusts or troughs there. But if this particle, if I consider this particle, the consecutive other particle is this. So this is the wavelength. So, we have identified what is called the wavelength, right? Now, one wave has one wavelength. So, now we know what is called a wave, one wave, the length of a wave. Now, now it is easy to describe the frequency, right, with this length. Now, frequency means, right, frequency means the, the, Waves occurred within one second. That means amount of waves or waves per second. Amount of waves occurred at one second. Within one second. If this time period is one second, uh, the wave frequency is 1.5. One and a half of, of a wave. Right? So then frequency. What is called a frequency then? What is called a frequency? Waves occurred in one second. Right. The last thing. We learned the last thing. Right. It is called the T. T means the period. Right. Period. Period means uh, the time taken for one wave. Period means time taken for one wave. That means for this. This is a one wave. Time taken for that is the period. Right? So that is the period. So we have learned already four characteristics. 
four characteristic amplitude frequency wavelength and the period from the beginning again i'll recall amplitude means the maximum displacement of particles from the mean position of a wave frequency means number of waves occurred in one second within one second wavelength means the distance between two consecutive particles of a wave period at the as the last point period means the time taken for one wave right we already have learned these characteristics right now we have one more two things to learn that is the period the relationship in between the frequency and the period right so frequency is equal to the according to this relationship 1 over t that means frequency is the inversely proportional to the period right or else the vice versa t is equal to 1 over f this relationship is useful for you for in calculations the other relationship is now we'll talk about the speed of a wave speed speed of a wave means distance over time usually speed equals distance over time right what's the distance here speed one wave the speed equals distance of a one wave means the wavelength lambda right wavelength look here and time means t so uh, that means actually time means no wait uh, time taken for one wave we have to divide it by the t right t means s means lambda over t means 1 over f therefore we can write speed of a wave is equals lambda and f so i can write this as for the speed of a wave we call v is equal to f lambda another mathematical expression that you can use in calculations right i think you have identified what is called a wave how the waves are occurred and what are the characteristics of a wave right we'll meet in the second part of this lesson later thanks for watching this